Welcome to Voices of Experience, the official podcast of the National Speakers Association. I'm your host, technology strategist and futurist, Crystal Washington. Are you ready to up the engagement level on your virtual meetings? If so, today's episode, Virtual Gamification, is just for you. Rob Ferre is in the VOE studio to share the tactics and tools you can use to gamify your online events. Are you ready? Let's go. Today on Voices of Experience, we have Rob Ferre. Now, he's been entertaining audiences for over 20 years and has spoken to audiences from Armenia to Dubai. Until very recently, he was the halftime game show host for the NBA's Utah Jazz basketball team. And Rob is here to talk to us today about his specialty, which is gamification, but specifically in the virtual world. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rob. Well, thank you for inviting me back to Voices of Experience. Even though this is my first time, I just feel like I'm coming back home. (laughs) Well, you're always at home with us, right? So let's get into this thing. First question is, why do you think gamification is one of the best ways to engage audiences, whether we're talking about in person or online? Well, people love to win. People love competition. And we are now putting them into a game where they have skin in the game where they could win something and people like beating their fellow colleagues and it's just a lot more fun that way and people don't want to miss out on the opportunity to win are you finding right now that clients are having a harder time being creative when it comes to inserting gamification in virtual events rather than uh, physical ones or is it looking the same i'm just curious to see what you're seeing with with our actual clients that are out there hiring Well, here's the thing is they don't know what they don't know. They don't know the possibilities behind gamification. And so we got to let them know that we can do something that is engaging and keeping people accountable and in their seats. Because this is what I'm talking about right now. I think a lot of people have virtual apathy, virtual fatigue, Mm. and it's passive. They can mute their video and then they can leave the meeting or they can work on something else and they can multitask but if we give them something other than just listening but engaging in the chat or playing a game or getting them up and out of their seats and doing them doing something physically this will keep people highly engaged and highly accountable to the meeting so it sounds to me like it's more important that we use gamification now than it was in person because in person they couldn't just if they got up and left the meeting, we saw them like they weren't invisible. Right. But on right. webinars and, and some of these other meetings where they're not sharing a camera or even when they are sharing a camera, I don't know if you've seen some of the videos of people like creating the things that look like them sitting there. <laughs> like it sounds like we, exactly. we have to in, in, increase gamification to keep people engaged if they're already fatigued. Right. Right. And this is a lot more fun too. And it gives people a chance to check out, you know, I, was listening to John Molidar when he presented to our chapter years ago and he says people need an opportunity to check out because of their brains you know either they're gonna go to the bathroom leave the room check their email check their Facebook but every eight minutes he said you need to create some sort of engagement factor in your presentation and this is one of them either through gamification and there's all sorts of levels of gamification they don't have to play a game and when I'm talking about this you can just tell people to get out their cell phones and do a selfie in front of the virtual meeting and I tell people to do that and that's one way to create engagement so are there different types of games you would use in a meeting versus a webinar and and just to for clarification's sake when we're talking about meeting you know we've all been on zoom or go to meeting and everyone can share their cameras versus if you're on a webinar that's when usually only the panelists or the presenters have a camera so are there different types of games we can use in each scenario yeah and when i talk to my planners we need to figure out what type of format or platform we're going to be using okay. so it's difference between meetings and webinars meetings we all can see faces webinars we can't mm-hmm. and so i do different games and games that we can just play with people in the chat but what's really cool about webinars if we can't see every everybody's faces 
For example, on Zoom, we can promote somebody to presenter and bring two people to play a game, and we get to watch these two people compete. And it's a lot of fun because we can bring them up onto the hot seat, and now we have the video of these two people. And so I want people to think about what games they can play. They can do an all-play game, they can do team-oriented games, and they can do versus-type games. And so there's so many different ways for us to do it. And I imagine you have fun just watching somebody compete too because that's some I know that guy. This is a lot of fun. And the games I used to do for the Utah Jazz was deal or no deal. And that kept so many people in their seats because they live vicariously through this other person who is trying to guess how much money is in the case. Mm. And they were all rooting for this person to win. And so it doesn't matter if it's just one person playing or everybody playing. But there are different games for different situations. So when you're talking to your planners, are we going to be doing this in a webinar style or a meeting style? Because the thing is, you can adapt your games to any style. It's a lot more fun when you can see everybody's faces. Mm -hmm. You know, I was recently on the Influence Breakout Sessions. If you're not going to those, you need to be. Yes. And there was Mike Walter and Tammy Evans talking about different games that they can do visually. And they had a game where they had everybody show their socks or their shoes, what they were wearing. And it's a lot more fun because now people know it's about them. People okay. love to be highlighted. People love to know that they can be the center of attention at every given point in a meeting. And so we now turn the spotlight off of yourself as a presenter, but onto the people in the meeting. And people love that. Something that you said that I think we should probably amplify here, Rob, is the fact that you talked about you need to have this conversation with your client beforehand. And I know some of the best speakers that I've ever seen, I found out, Rob, that they really go into depth asking questions about the audience members beforehand and the platform and the meeting. And it sounds like with webinars and virtual meetings, this is even more so the case because the more information we have up front, it sounds like we better be able to design games for that audience. Yeah, and I'm now finding, you know, and I've done this with my meeting planners beforehand. We had meetings beforehand, but we can now act as producers in creating a fun experience for all the attendees. Mm -hmm. And so I'll talk to them and give them ideas and give them options. And I usually can show them different games that we can play. And speaking of different games, I have games of all sorts. Games that are just interactive where we tell people to, you know, once again, show their footwear or show their favorite animals or, or have a funny background. We can do funny little interactive games like that. Or we can have competition type games. We, I even have software that we can stream like Family Feud. People know these games and we, they can play these games. But one of the simplest ways you can do it, you can even incorporate it into your slides. Okay. You can have an either-or scenario, a this-or-that type game. Mm -hmm. And I play games like true-or-false type games. And you can promote people up or they can just put it in the chat and say, okay, is this fact true or false? And so people can just write it in the chat. You don't have to have a winner every time. But people love to put in their comments, love to be able to give their their opinions on things. And so this is one way of doing it. I love it because if you do a this or that game, you can have it where you say one, two, three, and let people answer if they're all unmuted on a exactly. meeting. You can do it where they answer in chat, or you could actually launch a poll and see how people guess and, and, and do it that way. So it sounds like there's so many ways we can do this, but it, it does seem, tell me if I'm off base here, that it requires some planning because you were talking about incorporating the slides. So we don't just have our regular presentation and then stop and say, let's play a little game. I mean, we can, but it sounds like if we have a slide setting it up, it creates a better experience. Yes, it does. And here's the thing about it. Your game doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like completely random. It doesn't have to be like, hey, now let's play a game that relates to nothing we're doing. I often tell people you can do a game that is educational, that can help your people retain the knowledge that you have just given them. So I usually do games that are related to the subject matter. Okay. And so I can either promote two people or we can put it in the chat. So we can do these type of games and it can work in the PowerPoint 
-hmm. And so it's very easy to do. And you can just do it on your PowerPoint. You come to that point in the game. And so are you guys ready to take this to the next level? Well, let's Ooh. test your knowledge. You know, like what? Ooh, they're testing my knowledge. And now you have a game built into your presentation. It can be in this or that, either or. And it's really easy to do. Or you could have three different options, and they can all put it in the chat. Or here's another next level thing. They can send it to you privately. And if you're a one-man show, it, it's a little bit harder. But you can always involve somebody else. You can have an assistant. And I've seen lots of presenters. Mm -hmm. When we had Fripp present for our, our chapter, she brought in her own guy who was monitoring the chat answering the questions for her. You could have somebody else, but guess what? If you don't have somebody on your team, you have somebody that you're working with, the mm -hmm. person that hired you, and you can have them monitor the chat. They can keep scores, but people can also, in the chat, send the answers privately, either to you or to your co-presenter, and that way you can have the answers not in the chat, not everybody's answering, and so you can keep it secretive. So there's so many different ways for people to get those answers and to create competition. It sounds like all we need is creativity. Now, speaking of creativity, I just want to throw something out there because there might be people that are, are listening to us right now, Rob, that think, okay, I'm creative, but creating a game show graphic, there's tons of resources out there like Fiverr or Upwork where you can find people to design a graphic for next to nothing. So just throwing that out there for anybody that, because I know yes. there's people that are like, oh, you know, I don't know how to make this pretty. You don't have to. Pay somebody five, ten dollars $10 and let them create a little graphic. Right. I also use Canva. I love Canva. Yes. You could just create a slide. They have slides in Canva. But here's two more resources. Okay. And I know people don't want to pay for extra stuff, but if you're willing to pay for it, you can get amazing slides and amazing outcomes. But here's the thing is uh, there is what is called Kahoot, which is built for educators. Okay. And you could just, let's say you're just doing a couple of virtual events a month, or you're just saying, I want to do this just for the time being. You can pay month to month. You don't have to pay for the whole year. There's also called Mentimeter. And I love both of those options. And you can just pay month to month, but Mentimeter, I actually like it even better because you can use live polling mm -hmm. and you can also create game slides in there. There. And Ooh. you can build it all into your presentation or you can have it on a second screen. I usually have it on a second screen. And the cool thing about Mentimeter is you get live, and Kahoot does this, you get live answers and you use their software for it. So I present it on the board. You tell them to go to the website and they have to put in the code. They're now entered into the game or into the poll. So it can be educational and fun at the same time. And so you are now engaging people on a different platform you tell them to open up their browser open up their phones but I remember Brian Fanzo talked to us also in influence breakouts he says think about how many people are on their phones mm -hmm. watching these meetings that's a big reality so if you are going to be doing these meetings maybe in advance tell people to be sure that they are on their laptops and have their phones ready to play games that makes sense because if they're on the Zoom from their phone and them trying to get to Mentimeter on the phone, it could, it, be, it could become a little bit of a, a issue, I could imagine. Exactly. You know, for, for anyone who's unfamiliar, do you mind spelling out Mentimeter and Kahoot? Yeah. So Kahoot is with a K, K A H O O T. Mm -hmm. Now, Mentimeter, some people get confused with this. Mentimeter is the back end. So M E N. T I meter. Menti with an I. Okay. Menti.com is where people go to and get the code, enter the ah, code. Okay. So your users use Menti. Mm -hmm. As a producer, as the host, you use Menti Meter where you present your slides. And okay. guess what? You can do two free slides, two free polls, and three quizzes within a presentation. So you can give up to five slides and do some gamification if you're like, I, I don't know if I want to invest in this, but mm -hmm. try it out. I always call it a beta test. If, if there's a smaller group you're doing this for, you can try this out and use Mentimeter. First time I ever saw it was our president, Anna Liotta, when she presented to our chapter, and I thought, this is beautiful. We also used it at winter conference. It's a great tool. So Mentimeter, you mentioned it's great for polls. You can also do game slides with it. Kahoot, you said you could do polls as well, but you also said it had something to do with education. What's, what's the difference? What's something Kahoot offers that Mentimeter doesn't? 
I, I think Kuhu is more geared towards children, and okay. it's actually built for educators, teachers. Okay. And so if you have an educator's license, if you are a teacher, I think they do have free versions for educators. So oh, yeah. I imagine some of our speakers are in the educational world and know yeah. about it or didn't realize they could get a free version because they are an educator. And so I don't know those licenses, but look into it and where you could actually use it as a resource because you are an educator. I love it. Oh my gosh, you're giving so much juicy information, Rob. Thank you. Yeah. You know, my last question for you is yes. people that are listening right now, they're like, this all sounds great, but this is overwhelming because they're listening to stuff right now, Rob, where people are saying you have to buy this camera, you have to get this, or you have to get that. Yes. yes. Is this easy? Like, is it easy to add this to your presentation? Is, is this something that takes hours? It's a good question. Nothing is easy right now. I'm going to tell you that. Mm. And if this is something that you can implement, but you need to take the time to rehearse just like anything. Okay. And I think once you rehearse with it, you can have great success with it and stand out. Even if it's just one game, people will remember that. People will say, oh, she was a great presenter. She had content that was relevant to us. Oh, and then she played this game in the middle of, a, of our presentation. So if you are going to do this, I always say do a beta test or don't do it when the stakes are very high. So if you want to do a beta test, grab some friends and say, hey, I am testing out some games. Jump on a Zoom call. It'll be 15 minutes. It'll be a lot of fun. Give me some feedback. People are always happy to do that. Well, Maybe not as not much now as we used to be. But people are happy to give. I don't know if people want to be in front of screens all day. But it can't, there is a learning curve. But I know there are options out there. Right now I'm using what is called the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini where I can switch from two screens. So I have two laptops. Mm -hmm. And that makes things a lot easier easier. Can you and say I what you have one more time? I, do you mind just repeating that? Of course. It's Black called Magic. the Black Magic Design mm -hmm. and it's the ATEM Mini. A-T-E-M Mini. Now this is a switcher. There is also a pro version. Mm -hmm. But this switcher allows you to go from different cameras to different laptops. And so what I use, I have a separate laptop which has my slides and my games. And then go from HDMI or my port out into the mixer and then it all can go into my stream into my zoom call it's a lot easier to do than keeping things on your desktop I've also heard another hack is to use Google Slides mm. that way you know when you use like keynote or PowerPoint it takes over your entire screen and it goes into double screen mode and then you can't see anybody so if you use Google Slides all you have to do is click and you can still see the people in your presentation and one more thing I did not mention earlier mm -hmm. is my friends at crowd control games I love crowd control games and they have a lot of different softwares that you can use you buy it you own it it's not a subscription okay so you could even start with one game that you can do on your desktop and I use uh, there even have a countdown app yeah I usually go search for different videos with countdowns if you use the countdown app it's great to use and so before I start a meeting I have the countdown app going and people can see that the meeting is about to start people love that but there's also games like Family Feud Pyramid uh, deal or no deal which they call take it or leave it so they have these different games and if you're not into games I'm gonna give you one more thing if you go on there to crowd control games they have free downloads I think some people just perked up right now free downloads <laughs> yes you can get free backgrounds which is really fun okay. they have one of baby Yoda and the Mandalorian they have you in a spaceship they have different backgrounds that you can download and so if you just go on to their website there's so many different things on there they have zoom games it's one of my favorite websites so once again crowdcontrolgames.com I am so grateful that you shared this today, Rob. And I think for anybody that's listening to us right now, that's thinking, okay, I need to add this, I need to add that. I would actually say what you're sharing right now, Rob, is probably, I would implement this faster than some of the technology, some of the higher level technology that people right. are hearing that they need to get. Outside of the, you know, good lighting, a good mic, good camera, this is about the experience, right? And so all the extra technology that's something people don't see, uh, you know, the, in terms of the, the hardware. But right now, 
people are rehiring people for webinars and videos based on experience. And so what you're talking to goes to the heart of a client saying, you gave us a powerful experience. Right. And it's all about creating that engagement factor, that stickiness factor, that memorable factor. And we're giving something for people to compete against and having fun. And, and I've mentioned all these different softwares. I mentioned you can implement it into your PowerPoint. Yeah. You can do games without putting anything on your screen. Mm. You can just say, I need people. We're, you could do a scavenger hunt within their office. I do this all the time. Oh, wow. People could be staring at their screens. You're like, we're going to play a little game here. You know, I call it Survivor. You can call it what you will. And you can say, what we're going to do now is you have to find things that are in your office. They can't be on your physical body right now. So if I already say glasses, you have to find another pair of glasses. But you can say, find a pen, find your business card, find a fuzzy little animal, something you could put on your head. And you can... And if you have a tie, people come back to the screen, they can, you can vote on these different things, but this is just a fun little game that you can play. And when I learned this at the influence breakout, show us your socks, show us your shoes. Mm. These are just very simple things that keep people participating. And so they did even a hashtag game, you know, write your favorite hashtag or let's do a hashtag for this event. Now you're even crowdsourcing for your planner to do a, a hashtag. So these are different things that they can just do in the chat. You don't need all this software. Just get creative. And you can talk to brilliant minds like Brian Walter and Tammy Evans or other people just to find these ideas. You can't do it alone. This is what the power of NSA is. The power of association. This is a group think and we're all learning along this together. Did you notice when Rob mentioned the Influence pre-conference webinar showcasing interactive activities for events? Everyone who signs up for Influence has access to not only the conference information, but numerous pre-event breakout sessions as well. You can get started now on your business tune-up. For more information on how you can sign up and enjoy the pre-conference videos, visit nsaspeaker.org and click on the Events tab. Thank you for tuning in to Voices of Experience, the podcast of the National Speakers Association. Catch us on your favorite podcast app, YouTube, and NSA's social media profiles. I'll see you next week.